The Wudang Mountains are located in Hubei Province, just south of Shanxi Province, where I live. As one of China's four sacred Taoist mountains, there is a wealth of history here, and that, along with its association with Chinese martial arts, most notably Taiji Chuan or Tai Chi, is the reason I'm headed this way. So, bags packed, and an eight-hour train journey later, I arrived in Wudangshan Town, ready to find my school and begin my month-long adventure on the mountain. And here I am in the Wudang Mountains. I made it. So basically, these mountains are famous in Taoism. Uh, they're one of the four famous mountains in China for Taoism. And as a result, the whole mountains are covered in you know, Taoist monasteries and temples and palaces, just like this one. This is a Huilongguan. It's um, an old ruined Taoist monastery, and it's just next to the school where I'm staying at. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. I come up here almost well every day pretty much because actually we train sometimes up here in the morning anyway today i'm not going to show you around some of these monasteries and temples i'll do that in another video or two um today i'm just going to tell you a little bit about my life here what i've been doing and um yeah why i decided to come here in the first place so one of the things that separates these mountains the wudang mountains from the other taoist mountains in china are their connection with the chinese internal martial arts um, particularly Tai Chi Chuan or Tai Chi, as it's more commonly known in the West. Um, supposedly, the art was actually developed here in the Wudang Mountains by a Taoist hermit called Zhang Sanfeng. And um, that's what you know, the people here today are still continuing that lineage. So I'm staying at a school which is run by um, quite a famous Tai Chi practitioner and Taoist a guy called Master Chen Shiyu, and uh, he is yeah one of the one of the one of the leading figures in Sanfeng Pai, San, the Sanfeng sect of Tai Chi Chuan. So I'm staying at his school now. He's a very interesting guy. Um, does all sorts of things. You know, this guy is kind of amazing, and uh, that's what I'm doing here. So I'm I'm here to learn Tai Chi Chuan, and amongst other things, you know, um, they do all sorts of stuff here. You know, it's um it's it's a Taoist school. So there's, it's not just about martial arts, actually, but it's a fascinating place. So many of the schools in uh, Wudangshan are actually located in the town at the bottom of the mountain. Um, this one, however, is kind of halfway up the mountain, very much in the middle of nowhere, um, which is one of the reasons I chose it, you know. Um, I said in my previous video, um, for those of you who watched it, you know, I had a few reasons for wanting to come here. Um, it was my first plan of 2021. Basically, I just needed to get away from the city for a while, you know, and um, get in shape, uh, get more flexible, get stronger and learn something new. I wanted to start my 2021 with, a, with something positive, you know, and something different. I used to study martial arts, you know, when I was younger, when I was like 18 to 22, something like 23. Um, and, I, and I loved it. You know, I studied a little bit of Tai Chi Chuan and some other Chinese Kung Fu. Um, but then kind of stopped. And I think given the COVID pandemic last year, I don't know, I, I feel like I lost a lot of my routine and got a bit out of shape and I just felt a bit old, to be honest, for the first time in my life. So I wanted to come here and uh, try something different. So I've been here for a week so far. Um, I didn't really feel much in the first week because I was just kind of getting into that new routine, <laughs> a new life. Um, but I feel like, you know, I've been here for a little while now and uh, I feel quite comfortable with my surroundings and the people I'm staying with are great. Um, so I thought I'd start documenting a little bit about what's going on here and my life. So today I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing every day. So basically our day begins at about 7.30, not too early, uh, with breakfast. And uh, we have a very lovely lady who cooks for us every day. <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the food's good, actually. The food is quite nice. It's very samey, obviously. It's not vegetarian, but it's mostly vegetarian. There's usually a little bit of meat, but predominantly it's just rice and vegetables, which I think I've got used to quite quickly. Luckily, I, you know, I eat a lot of rice and vegetables anyway, because I live in China. Um, after after that, we, we, we start training. So like we train from about 9 till 11.30 in the morning, and we do a lot of stretching and a lot of kind of leg work and strength work 
Um, it's not that hard, actually. It's it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be, um, which is good, actually, because I didn't, I didn't really want to come here and just thrash myself to oblivion. You know, I wanted to actually be able to come here and relax and enjoy it and enjoy it, too. So luckily, the training for me, I think, is just the right level. Um, and obviously, then we practice our Tai Chi or, or whatever it is people are learning here. People are learning some different things. And we usually train, actually, in the morning when it's sunny, like it is today, up here in the uh, in the monastery, which is amazing. It's a great experience. And then after practice up here, we have um, our lunch break. Lunch is, lunch is great. It's uh, again more of the same. It's rice and vegetables, as you can probably imagine. Um, and then we have quite a, we have quite a long afternoon break, which is great. Um, we don't we don't start training again until three three o'clock. So people can just do whatever they want really. I mean, if you want to just rest or go to your room and chill out or I walk a lot obviously I mean I, I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come to the mountains because I do miss the countryside back home in England which I haven't had chance to go to for over a year um, so I walk a lot and explore just wander the mountains like an old Taoist hermit and um, but yeah people do different things you know med maybe meditate or practice or just hang out and chat and drink tea you know after that, um, we start training again. So we train again at three o'clock. So between three and around five-ish, to be honest, we, we, we train mainly our Taiji forms or sword forms or whatever it is people are learning. And then we have dinner. So obviously we, we all stay together for all these meals. Um, there's not many people here. I'll tell you about the people a little bit later. Um, but for dinner, you know, we, we, we have hot pot basically every single dinner, which is quite nice, but it's spicy as hell. And I've, I've got used to it very quickly because I'm not, great with spicy food to be honest and it's not even that spicy it's just me being a wuss i think anyway um but we have dinner and then after dinner we yeah we usually just hang out and listen to music or chat or just kind of just just hang out and get to know each other it's it's actually really really friendly and then um and then back to bed before waking up and repeating the process all over again so there are not many people here um uh, which is lovely you know I think when I came, when I first got here, there were about maybe 12, 12 people altogether. That's including everyone, you know, that's including even, even our IE, the cook and everyone. Um, but a few students have left and gone back to their hometowns for spring festival already. So right now, um, and I don't anticipate more people coming, there are four students. Yeah, four students. And it's a pretty like eclectic bunch of people actually. <laughs> Um, everyone's here for their, you know, different reasons. And I think everyone, everyone has a similar kind of outlook on life, you know, and, you know, I don't think most people would just kind of come to a mountain to live here in the dead of winter. I know it looks beautifully sunny and warm today, and it is actually, uh, when I first got here, it was absolutely freezing, freezing cold, cold to the point that all the water pipes were frozen and we had no running water. So the people, um, apart from the, the four students who are all who are all great, actually, we get on really well, um, are, there's obviously there's Master Chen Shi, who is just an incredibly talented person. He's lived up on the mountains for, I don't know, decades, you know, and um, he's obviously very proficient in, in the Wudang, in the Wudang martial arts, but also he's a master calligrapher musician he plays the he plays the, the guqin which is an old ancient chinese instrument and um a very very ancient chinese flute called the xiao which um he plays for us quite a lot actually when we're having dinner which is lovely The other people here are, um, there's a, a lady who basically runs the place, you know, um, her name is Jing and she's amazing, you know, she's, for, before I came here, she was a person I was in contact with talking about and kind of arranging everything about me coming here. I mean, she came to Wudang when she was, I think she, when she was about 30, she's been here for five years already and she wants to stay for another five, she says. 
and um, she's she's kind of fascinating, you know. She she's written a few books since she's been up here. She's an artist, um, so she's great. She's really helpful, and actually, she also speaks some English for the which helps with the finer points of Tai Chi, which my Chinese level is not good enough to really understand in Chinese. Um, and also, there's a the one of the one of the main trainers, the guy who actually does most of the teaching. He's one of Chen Shiyu's students. Uh, he's been here for eight or nine years. He's great, and um, he's this very cool, humble young guy who is, when it comes down to like martial arts, is an absolute beast. Um, so he's he's a, he's a really good, fun guy as well. So yeah, everyone's great. You know, I think it's um, it's just been a real pleasure being here so far, and. Uh, I don't regret it at all. I'm so happy I came. So that's basically what I wanted to show you today. Just a little bit about where I am and what I've been doing so far uh, here in the Wudang Mountains. Obviously, I do have a lot of time here. So um, I've got a lot of ideas for, for videos to bring you and to show you around these mountains, which are incredibly important in Chinese history and culture, um, you know, mainly because of their connection to Taoism, which again is is fundamental to, to Chinese culture. So hopefully I'll bring you some history, some culture, some nice walks, and I'll show you around these places. Just like this place behind me, which is um, it's fascinating to be honest, because it's well off the tourist trail. Nobody really comes here. And it's just this ruined temple with, you know, stuff, history, history just lying around on the floor, to be honest. And um, no one knows about it. So I know this is a little bit of a teaser, just showing you this today, but I will, um, I will show you around it in another video. All right, guys, uh, stay safe and take care. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do so. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.